together. I'm thinking Raid. They often look like cockroaches to me. You know, flip them like, ah! oh shit, it's Lil Wayne. <laughs> now that we're talking about ugly, let's talk about ugly men. Who aren't aware that they're ugly? It's really sad. Case in point, there I was in the Walmart trying to get to the juice aisle and get me a copy of Bride's Name. And I walk in the front, and I look to the left, which I hate. Don't y'all hate when that happens? Like, you really don't want to make eye contact with anybody, but yet you end up and it'd be the wrong damn person. Because right there, she liked me. No, bruh. It ain't even going down like that. And so I see him. I said, oh, shit. So I speed walk down to the juice aisle from the front of the store. It's all the way in the back. Fifteen seconds later, guess who come rolling up on me? Hey, how you doing? What's your name? And I turned and I looked at him and I looked him dead in the eye and I said, in a relationship. Thank you, social network, for that one. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I really wanted to tell him, honey, I don't do storybook characters, specifically Quasimodo. Okay. That was mean, huh? Was I wrong for that? But he wasn't cute. I need me a cute man. I am single, by the way. I know y'all surprised, right? I look damn good, don't I? Mm -hmm. The diva always try to look good. But anyways, the other day, I, I honestly, I think I've dated just about every crazy in L.A. County, possibly San Bernardino and Ventura. I haven't really met anybody from Orange County. Maybe I need to move down there. I might find something. But the other day I was watching my inbox and I got an uh, invitation to sign up for a class for $130. Did y'all know this? For $130 is a dating service offering women like myself. We're going to teach you how to walk, talk, dress, what time of day to meet me in an L.A. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, I guess Walmart wasn't a good idea. You know, 2 a.m. in the produce section in your sweats with your head in a ponytail and no makeup. Not a good idea, not a good place to meet men. And then I was thinking, you know, for gas money, ladies, I could just take all of y'all to a great place to meet men. Mm-hmm. Home Depot. Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honey, he, may, he can fix some stuff for you, honey. You need that leaky box to fix and you don't know how to fix it? Shoot, I'm going to get you with the Home Depot, man. And he can play the dumb role when you get in there. You be like, oh, my God, is that a faucet? Oh, my God, you are so smart. And, so, and, and they love that. And they eat it up. And, you know, you get a date. Just hopefully you won't be talking about wood shop the entire date, though. But another great place. Um, I went to law school. And um, when I was at law school, I had one of the best jobs, I believe, at that time in the world. To me, to, me, to this day, it still is one of my favorite jobs. But uh, it was a great place because your worst day, ladies, could be your best day. I interned at the Tulsa County Public Defender's Office. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday and Sunday, there I was just walking into the jail, Tulsa County Jail, getting a cat call. Damn, baby, you look good. Are you my public defender? Shit. 
And I'm just like, hmm, here I am in my sweats and stilettos and no makeup and a ponytail. And they think I look good. Shit, I'm Halle Berry today. <laughs> Um, as you, as I stated earlier, I did grow up in uh, the South, Texas. I was actually born in Mississippi, and uh, but I was raised in Dallas, Texas, for the most part. And you know, being black, I often had some issues in the South. For instance, when I first graduated from college, my first job was working for Hertz. So I was an assistant manager, and I was really fabulous at renting cars and dealing with irate customers. And so anyways, one day my boss says, hey, I need, need you to go to Park Place Mercedes and pick up this woman. I said, okay, no problem. Now, Park Place Mercedes is located in one of the more lucrative neighborhoods in Dallas, Highland Park. When you think of Highland Park, you think of uh, Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, or you also think of uh, Dick Cheney, our former vice president. And so anyways, I get to Park Place, there's this old lady and her old gentleman friend, they hop in the ride. We're riding back, we chit chat. All of a sudden, the old man said something that almost made me break into angry black woman mode. And he was like, you speak so well. <laughs> I speak so well. Huh. I said, what? You know, I could have just went off on him and been like, what were you expecting me to say, sir? Yo, grandma, grandpa, hop in the ride, yo. Well, see, I didn't do that. So let me just give him my academic resume so he'll know what's up with the diva, okay? I said, sir, I, I said, I, in high school, I graduated from law magnet high school. And I said, then I went on to the University of Tulsa. Tulsa, that's a good school. And I was like, yeah, you know they're letting women in now. And black people too. Ooh, <laughs> scary. Anyways, not too long ago I was in a car accident. Not good. I got rear-ended. And there I was, sitting in my car on a sunny day in L.A., enjoying my Kanye West and eating Popeye's chicken. <laughs> that I just picked up from the corner of Manchester and Figueroa. I was on USC's campus. All of a sudden, I felt a bump, and I, oh, bam, oh, oh, diva, damn, diva, damn, oh. And then all of a sudden, I look on the floor, and I come to myself, and I realize, this busted heifer to knock my chicken leg to the ground. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. But needless to say, I heard and got my happy self to the emergency room. How many of y'all ever been to the emergency room on a Saturday night? Y'all ever been there? If y'all ain't been to Torrance Medical Center, honey, it is like Club TGI Fridays up in there. <laughs> and not just TGI, I'm talking about Magic Johnson over there off of Citronella. Mm -hmm, that type of party. Folk were all up in there ordering pizza, had sleeping bags and stuff. Then they had this system called Fast Track. That meant you get seen first. I said, hell, are we at a hospital or Universal Studios? What's going on up in here? Needless to say, I didn't even get no help. I sat there three hours. I'm sick of this shit. I'm going home. Uh, anyways, um, i noticed since I've lived in L.A. that a lot of us have vanity plates. I even have vanity plates. Because, you know, it tells a story. Sometimes you don't always understand what the story is because you're like, I don't understand all them X's and D's. But okay, maybe it means something to you. But you know, CPA tells you someone is an accountant. MD tells you someone is a doctor. ESQ tends to tell you someone is a lawyer. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? It would be really great if license plates just told the truth about what men really were about. Right, ladies? Like, bro. <laughs> Bad credit. <laughs> Stalker. Because, yeah. man, we need to know this stuff about you because some of y'all just lose y'all damn mind showing up at the house all times, day and night, when we have told you it's over. <laughs> there ain't no more. Okay? I know it was good, but no, it, you can't come back. No, you can't come back. And plus, if you broke, they always expect you to pay. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, no, honey, this lobster's on you. But wait, Mignon, you knew we were going to Morton's. Mm -hmm. That's okay, I'm going to pay for my part. I'm going to leave you here, okay? Um, anyways, recently I was watching the news, and um, 
I was watching this segment on Good Morning America, and they were talking about there's a new thing going on about women in Hollywood being too buffed and too toned. And I said, hmm, now one of them I can relate to, but them other two I'm not so sure about. Kelly Ripper? Come on now. Cameron Diaz? Mm -hmm. I just thought they were hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because they look emaciated. When I see them, I think of that ASPCA commercial that come on late at night with Sarah McLaughlin singing that sad ass song with them half dead dogs with hats on there. <laughs> Speaking of which, I want to tell ASPCA, now if you want us to come down there and adopt a dog or a cat, can you make them look healthy enough for us to take home? Because you know what, I can barely pay my medical bills. I'm not trying to take care of Hank's medical bills too, okay? Anyway, speaking of getting in shape, I decided to get in shape. Because, you know, if I'm going to be the diva, I must be swelt and fine. I don't want this to go away though, because this is an accent. <laughs> but um, anyways, I joined a boot camp, and this boot camp, every Friday they make us run Signal Hill. And so, you know, I'm all excited, because I'm like, if you run hills, you lose weight. They didn't tell us that this hill was going to require some repelling gear. I said, how the hell are we supposed to get this deep ass hill? And the lady's like, okay, ladies, get ready to run. And I'm just like, it's 530 in the morning. I'm in Uncle Sam's army, but okay. And so anyway, I started running, y'all. I ain't even get like four or five paces before the matrix hit me, and I was like, oh. And then I had to dig in deep and start singing that old Negro spiritual. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. Oh yeah, I had to dig in deep and call him Jesus, amen. <laughs> Speaking of Jesus, I was watching the news. I often watch the news. I love watching the news. And um, this lady down in Houston, Texas, is offering a fitness class for women every second Sunday after church services. It's called Pole Dancing for Jesus. And I was like, oh, hey, y'all. Y'all going to have pole dancers in the church now. We already got praise dancers. I said, every mother born across the country is me. Because see, them old black churches, especially them old Baptist churches, they always want to talk about, oh, Lord. Sister Bessie usually is her name. Oh, Lord, Jesus, y'all done let the pole dancers up here. Y'all already told y'all the praise dancers were okay, but my God, Jesus died on the cross, not on the pole. <laughs> Before I go, I want to talk about white people. <laughs> <laughs> Always come up missing. Like, what are y'all that came up missing down here in Aruba? I don't understand it. Y'all come to daytime, nighttime, midday, lunch. Ain't nobody y'all always come up missing. And I spent a lot of time watching Discovery ID. How many y'all watch that? I love that show, Deadly Women, Behind Mansion Wall, who disappeared is my favorite. Usually when they show black people, we always on the run from the law. But white people, uh oh, y'all just bet. Vanished into thin air. <laughs> and I came up with a story about it. Y'all want to hear it? Yeah. Like to hear it? Go. So there's little Becky Sue walking down this vacant road when a man rolls up in the serial killer van. And he says, Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Where are you going? Oh, I'm just going to the store. <laughs> Buy me a cake. Go make a cake. Gotta get some milk and eggs. Well, do you want to ride? Yeah, I want to ride. Well, hop in. Let's move that duct tape. Girl. <laughs> now she built box material. Should have read the vanity plate. It said serial killer. Anyways, that's all my time. You all have been a fabulous. <laughs>